It's not difficult to learn the identities of those that are careless about the eventual impact of their techno trash. Brand names and institutional asset tags sometimes remain on the equipment. But even when tags have been peeled off, it can be shocking to find what is hidden below the surface. As part of its investigation into the origins of e-waste found in Nigeria, BAN purchased second-hand hard drives in the market and sent them to a cyber investigative service located in Zurich, Switzerland. It's child's play to recover them. And so after only a little bit of, of time that you have to invest, you can find a lot, a tremendous lot of data on those files from the former users. Here you have the letterhead from the World Bank. Here we see a very private email that was sent. Actually, it was a lady who was working at the World Bank, and at some point they did this pose of her computer. And she most probably didn't have any idea what is happening with the data that she had on her hard drive with her letters. That's a list of children which were taken into protective custody by the government. And I can see which the name of the children, the name of the parents, Maybe the children don't even know the names of their parents. I see how much money they get. For the companies, it's very risky. They cannot track back what they are distributing all over the world. You find confidential material on those hard drives, calculations, CVs from employees, private mail, so a lot of stuff that really, really shouldn't get out of their hands. The trade in toxic wastes leaves the poorer people of the world with an untenable choice between poverty and poison, a choice that nobody should have to make. In 1989, the global community came together in Basel, Switzerland, to sign an international treaty designed to stop the international dumping of toxic waste. And in 1995, the Basel Convention passed a full ban on the export of hazardous wastes including electronic waste from developed countries to developing countries. All 27 European countries have already made it illegal to ship toxic waste to developing countries for any reason. But to date, the US is the only developed country in the world that has not ratified the Basel Convention. And in fact, the United States and Canada continue to actively work to undermine the waste export ban. Meanwhile, unscrupulous recyclers have taken advantage of the uneven playing field and freely export massive volumes of electronic waste each year, while their governments look the other way. It was for this reason that BAN, together with the Electronics Take Back Coalition, created the E-Stewards Initiative. Our government has been horribly negligent in failing to control toxic waste exports, and particularly to the developing countries. The e-stewards are a group of North American recyclers and refurbishers who have agreed to go well beyond compliance and to meet the very highest standard for responsible reuse and recycling. E-stewards ensure that every pound of e-waste is properly recycled and refurbished in ways that protect workers and also that prevent this e-waste, these poisons, from going to developing countries. We believe that once the public and responsible businesses learn about the toxic impacts of this e-waste dumping business, that they will look for the best players in the industry. But the problem is it's extremely difficult to tell the good from the bad. So many recyclers will simply tell you what you want to hear. So by identifying the e-stewards, we've made the choice easy. E-stewards are willing and able to prove that they're operating responsibly and people who care must insist on that level of accountability. Now, thanks to the eStewards Initiative, finding a globally responsible electronics recycling or asset recovery company is easy. The next task is to enlist all consumers, large and small, to do the right thing and agree to make exclusive use of these leaders and avoid the laggards in the industry. The real answer surely lies not in passing our electronic waste to those least able to deal with it, but in responsibly refurbishing or recycling it here at home.